Um, Amanda Stairs, welcome to Sydney and congratulations on Madame, your new film. Um, firstly, what a great cast you've got together with Harvey Keitel, our Tony Collette and Rossi De Palma. Um, what was it like handing over your babies to these really talented actors? Well, I was, that was my dream cast, so I was kind of scared at the beginning. Uh, and um, there are amazing people before amazing actors, so we had a great time talking uh, about the characters, uh, even more than directing them, um, like telling them what they had to do. Um, the fun part was to uh, create characters together and give them a past and a future and understand at what point in their life they were and using their own stories to build um, a character. Um, Tony was really fascinating, she's really a clock. She has a comedy tempo, an amazing comedy tempo and she was playing a bad girl, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really funny for her, I think, to, to play this kind of character. Because at the same time, I wanted people to still feel something for her, to understand that she is um, not that bad, that in her own point of view, she is a good person and she is trapped in her sadness. And was Rossi the Pan, I mean, did you write the role with her in mind? Because I couldn't imagine any other actress that could do it so well. So Rossi came to me six years ago asking me to write a play for her. And I felt like um, I'm very flattered, but I, I cannot write something on purpose. Uh, one day an idea will stroke me, yeah, it will strike me and it will be your face on it. And Madame came along and I called her and he she, she wasn't on the first day and um, so I wrote it, basically I wrote it not really for her but uh, I think um, her her face was somewhere in my mind waiting to jump on the part. <laughs> okay, because um, I was wondering what did drive you to write it because even though this is like Cinderella and a bit of Bridget Jones, it, it's got a real political level to it as well. Yes. Is that important? Yes, it's a really, for me, it's a really uh, a social comedy. I mean, um, the political background was more important than the fun part. In my opinion, uh, making people laugh helped them to uh, understand what's behind, but uh, I don't like laughter with no uh, intellectual point of view behind. And of course it was a movie about um, the fact that money is the new color of skin, the fact that you cannot move from a social background to another and I think uh, nowadays uh, living in Trump's American society you can get that it's harder and harder uh, even if uh, the American society pretends the opposite but it's harder to uh, move uh, to a place different than the one you were born in. Um, as education is not free, as uh, uh, it's there is like a real, um, it's a real ladder, and society um, is not helping you to get up. Okay, I mean, in the context of all that, are you kind of pleased that President Macron won the, the last election? Is that a move away from that or is it still another path down that, that road? I don't know if it's a move away. The thing is, we didn't find another solution. We didn't find a better option than um, capitalism. So we have to deal with it. And Macron was still a uh, kid of capitalism with his good points because he's a bit lefty, so he wants to help people. But at the end, it feels to me like a big masquerade, like uh, the charity people do in LA, and they are giving checks to help poor people. But at the end, they're like deducting it from the taxes and making a good impression to the neighbors. I don't feel empathy, and I deeply feel that we are in a world that needs another option and that we are waiting for it. 
I hope the kid will come along with an idea. Uh, but for now, uh, we are just you know, starting to maintain society, contain it uh, before it explodes. But it will have to. <laughs> okay. Um, and then looking back across your career, you've written nine books, more than half a dozen plays, and now two movies. Um, in terms of process, what do you enjoy in terms of writing the most? At the beginning, my dream was to be a novelist. Um, and I feel this is the most hard challenge. Um, so many things have been written, so why write another book? Uh, but it's really a novel art and also it's you're by yourself uh, and everyone is equal with a paper and, and a pen. A uh, movie is still an industry where money is needed. Uh, it's hard to compare movies with different budgets because you can do your best at the end. Money is an important part of the <laughs> process. Um, and plays, it's, it's an amazing um, playground. Um, and I love plays, but it's harder and harder because we don't give young generation um, the idea that imagination is an important part of it all and and you need imagination to go and enjoy a play you need to fill up the empty spaces um, but I do love it a lot uh, so I don't really know what I like best I think one thing is resting me from another and helping me uh, get better uh, to another um, place uh, at the end I'm just doing my the same job, like telling stories. <laughs> okay. Did you find like being a playwright helped you become a better writer because you're getting that instant audience reaction? Um, I guess so. I think um, it's. I don't know if I became better, but I. I think it's. You have to invent a lot when you're a playwright because uh, you are. With like. Uh, a wooden floor and walls and that's it so it helped me find solutions when I don't have enough money in a, in, in a movie and invent another way of telling the same thing and gave me freedom I think. Alright, um, Manta Stairs thanks for talking to On The Town and good luck with Madame. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>